Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Riot T3500, which is on the larger end for this T, and then there's like a four digit number series. This is a Tashi, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce his last name, Barucha design, uh, who is, that's probably a name that you're familiar with. If you're familiar with Riot, you're probably familiar with that name. Uh, I have reviewed a, a couple of, of the uh, knives in this line. The T3500, I believe, is a model that has been around before. This is not the first time they've done a T3500. It's not the largest in this series, um, but this is the newest variant. Um, what I found interesting is it has all these holes on the other side, which is pretty cool. This particular one with this black sort of marble carbon fiber, um, I believe is a Crane's Cutlery exclusive. These knives in general will be available at Crane's Cutlery. I think at the time of this recording, it's set up as a pre-order, but by the time you're watching it, it might be available. So in any case, I'm gonna link it right down below so you guys can check it out. Uh, what you're seeing here, the reason for this long dialogue, um, is the newest version of the T3500, and the first time I've ever handled it. So uh, we're gonna be taking a much closer look at it today. Thanks so much to Crane's Cutlery for loaning this for me to take a look at. Thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, long intro there. Let's go ahead and get a measurement. The T3500, this is gonna be a Goldilocks situation for a lot of people if you've ever looked at these series of knives. This comes in just shy of eight inches. We're looking at about 7.85 inches overall with exactly a three and a half inch blade, and your cutting edge is coming in at about 3.35 inches. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. There's a lot of presence to this knife, so even though it is not as long as the Rat 1, it definitely feels like the same size of knife kind of in your hand because there's so much more, I mean, like the height and the thickness of the scales, right? It just feels like a much larger knife. Up against the uh, Demco AD 20.5. I keep poking the tip of that into the background material. Uh, how about some different knives? Let's do the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. That, uh, the PM2 has got some crap on it today. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, so there you go. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Almost forgot to say that there. And the Benchmade Bug Out. The uh, it most closely, I mean, this knife is, it's got a totally unique design, but it feels most of the size comparisons I've got laid out here, it feels most like the Ritter Hogue in terms of how much room it takes up in your hand and pocket. How's the action? Well, this is a Riot knife. So if you're familiar with Riot, um, then you'll know that the action is very smooth and very consistent. Uh, generally, Riot knives start off a bit tight and then they become fall shut over time, which is actually how I prefer my new knives to be. A lot of times when I get a knife and it's fall shut right out of the box, I go, great, but that just means I'm gonna have to tighten it or adjust it in like a week, right? Um, so usually I prefer how Riot does this. Uh, it's just a little bit, like it's very consistent in terms of how it feels just using my finger there and to kind of feel for lumps and bumps and grittiness. It's super consistent, super smooth. No double cut, clutch or anything like that. We are close, to be honest, real close, but it feels good. Real nice detent, perfect for this knife. The action is good uh, off the, uh, the flipper tab, which is fairly low profile. You do need to dedicate light switch. Uh, you need, you need to shift to light switch mode with your index finger and not try to push button it because it is a tad pointy if you are used to doing that. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3 you can see here. It really is about the same. There's some contouring going on with the uh, T3500, which is something that I appreciate, so that's nice. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here that this guy is it's it's a little bit longer than the Spyderco Para 3, and in terms of height, I mean, this guy is fairly tall, but it's still not, <sighs> right here, this area right here is approaching the same height as the Spyderco Para 3, but it's not quite in the same place. Uh, nowhere near the same length as the PM2. So for the most part, it's not gonna bother, it's not gonna bother people, especially if you uh, dedicate your pocket 
like it, your knife pocket is just dedicated to your knife, right? Materials, like I said, on this guy we have some beautiful, and I mean beautiful, marble carbon fiber inserts uh, in the uh, titanium scales. And then we of course have a satin finished M390 blade. No additional milling except for the pockets that are meant uh, for the uh, carbon fiber inlays. So it's still relatively heavy. I'm gonna guess that this is probably about four to four and a half. Nope, I'm really, really wrong. 5.04 ounces balance. <laughs> Listen, to this is me, me trying to explain why I'm always wrong about weight. <laughs> I'm going to cut myself off and not even try. It's just hard to guess, man. 5.04 ounces. It really didn't feel like that. I really thought that it would be less, but I guess not. So ratios on this, not super great. It does not feel like a five ounce knife, but I mean, what are you going to do? It just, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Um, so the first time I ever saw this line of knives, I thought that it, that's an, uh, an integral because of how perfectly they seem this back here and because I didn't see any uh, handle hardware. It's because it's all over here, which I kind of like. Now, some people are gonna be quick to point out that means that the threads are in the titanium. I don't like that because if you strip the, you know, I'm not, not me, I'm talking for the people who are gonna complain. They're gonna say, if you strip out the threads in the titanium, then the entire scale needs to be replaced. True, I have never actually heard of that happening. I think it's incredibly rare. Um, the circumstances for that to occur, I, I think are, it's pretty unlikely. So I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, the benefit here is that you have one, two, three screws total uh, and the pivot and then the knife is apart. So uh, I kind of like that. I've always said that. I mean, literally for the four years I've been here on YouTube, I've said, I kind of like it when it goes right into the scales. It doesn't bother me. Uh, so you can judge that for yourself, but I think that's a benefit. Um, what else do we need to do here? Let's measure blade stock thickness. I cannot believe the battery on this thing is still going, but it is. <laughs> so there's no reason to replace it yet. Look at this. It's still going. Okay. Blade stock thickness is coming in also much thicker than I thought at 156 thousandths. I don't know why it doesn't look like 156, or, but that's about ZT0562 territory. But there you go, it is what it is. Okay, meat and potatoes time. This is a super good looking knife in, in the sense that it's, well, I, that's really subjective. I like how this looks. Um, and what's cool is, is that it's, it's pretty much wildly different than like your generic knife shape, right? I mean, if we take the bug out and we just call this the most generic pocket knife in existence, which I mean, it is, right? Uh, and then you look at this, the T3500. Um, this is a wildly different uh, aesthetic. Generally speaking, when you deviate from these general lines, right? Because this, the lines here on the bug out, that's why I always get mad at people when they say, oh, it's a copy of the bug out. Like the bug out owns these lines specifically? No, like every knife looks like the bug out. Every generic knife looks like the bug out. When you deviate too far from these generic lines, generally what you get is really awkward ergonomics. That's not the case with this knife, which is really cool. A lot of my collection is, are knives that just look wild and crazy and you know, they're really not comfortable. It's, it's a lot like holding on to, um, I don't know, like a boat anchor or a pineapple. Uh, it's not really made for the human hand. This is actually really nice. I can feel the pocket clip a little bit, but really just right at the tip. I don't know why this is so sharp. Riot and Tashi, uh, why? Why is that so pointy? I'm really glad it's not swooping upwards because that would be a nightmare. But that little tip right there really needs to be knocked down a bit. It's it's pretty sharp. Outside of that though, and I really can't, again, it's flat, so I'm really not feeling it too much. The ergonomics are pretty good. You would expect this to, you know, kind of have the ergonomics of an, of an angry rectangle, um, but it <laughs> doesn't. Uh, it's pretty nice. And the slight contouring also helps. They've also chamfered the edges. So you initially, the aesthetic is, wow, that's really angular and sharp, but then you look closely, uh, they did knock this down here, which is really nice. They also made plenty of room for you to access this lock bar, which is much appreciated because, you know, a lot of times you designers will 100% go for the aesthetic 
and not pay much attention to, you know, when it comes to actually manipulating the thing or using the thing, they won't pay attention to that. This, all of those details are paid attention to, which is really cool. This is a knife that's fun to look at. It's a conversation piece, right? It's a really nice knife. And it's also really functional. I mean, this is a knife that I would absolutely take out and use. You can also use this flat area to choke up a little bit. I mean, there's enough room here to where I would feel comfortable. You still, you really have to pay attention because it li it literally, look at this. It transitions right, right into, I've never seen something that will more readily take your finger off if you slip from the choked up position to up here. I mean, that is bad news. That is ready, I mean, that that reminds me of a table saw. <laughs> well, I remember my dad being like, don't run your freaking fingers up there, use the stick, right? Um, and yeah, uh, maybe, maybe don't put your fingers up there, but you can if you need to, just really pay attention to it, definitely. Um, the blade looks awesome. I really like the blade. Normally, I do not like recurves, but this is a cool looking blade. This is one of those knives where the entire theme of the knife makes sense. I can see why they chose every single line in the knife and I really appreciate it. I also really like this knife in a bigger size. Some knives make more sense in a smaller size and some, some knives make more sense. This is on the larger side for this series and I appreciate this, the design so much more um, you know, in this size. And honestly, I'd really like to handle that. I think it's 4,000 or is there a 4,500 even? I, I, I mean, the bigger the better, honestly, with this with this uh, setup. It says Riot right here. Um, normally, I prefer a tumbled finish and honestly, I still would, but the satin finish on this, for whatever reason, just looks really nice. I like it. There's a flat that runs out about 50% the length of the blade. There's a nice swedge here. And there's a reasonable amount of thickness carried out to the tip. It's it's honestly pretty wide. So fairly strong geometry uh, that will still allow you to slice. The problem with this geometry is going to be sharpening it. You can see here there is definitely uh, a distinct transition. Once we get to here, it goes up. So you're going to have to change angles. And that's going to mean mm, for most people, unless you are a, you know, sharpening master wizard level 999, uh, you're going to round that corner out. So it's going to look gr more and more nasty as time progresses. Um, but it'll work. Uh, recurves are not the best at cutting everything, um, but it'll slice, it'll cut, it'll poke, it'll do what you want it to do for general EDC. I like how the blade looks and it functions well enough that it, you know, in an EDC environment, it's going to be good. M390, generally speaking, when it comes to Riot, is heat treated properly, which these days, is something that we have to celebrate, which is unfortunate. Uh, all companies should be heat treating M390 properly. Um, but uh, it turns out a lot of them don't. A lot of them, you know, tend to fall down at 59 or even 58. I think uh, M390 tends to be generally acceptable at 60. And uh, the preferred range is more like 61 to 63. Um, so Ria generally hits the 61. 62 mark if i'm not mistaken uh there are lots of other channels that have tested this so you can check that stuff out if you want to um but riot tends to do it correctly so that's nice i really like the pivot color i think that looks nice up against you know it goes from the carbon fiber in this case to the pivot color to uh, the pivot itself on this side it's just the pivot doesn't quite look as good but i appreciate this side these will come in a uh wide variety of different flavors if you will they have some micarta ones I am sure that Crane's Cutlery will do something crazy like, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say guaranteed, but they usually do some type of wild mocha tie uh, or zerka tie, you know, variant. Um, but if you don't like the black, I'm sure that they'll do like a blue or a red carbon fiber. They'll probably do micarta. Um, and there's probably a less expensive all titanium variant of this out there. This is not the one that I'm handling though. And it's really hard to get pricing right now since this new 30, uh, Turdy, <laughs> 3500 T, 3500 variant. This new variant is not actually dropped yet with accurate pricing everywhere. I just have the Cranes Cutlery exclusive pricing. If there is a full titanium variant out there that is less complicated than these, um, you know, versions with the inlays, it will probably be a little bit less expensive. So anyways, uh, as per usual, Riot's inlay work is masterful. The transition, you, I mean, it's, it's just barely recognizable right here. 
when we transition from carbon fiber to titanium and back to carbon fiber. But as far as like gaps or ugly spaces or anything like that, they are non-existent. Riot really does a good job of this and they are still doing a good job. I love how this area looks back here. It is a seam and some people don't like seam construction and admittedly seam construction looks better or worse depending on the model, but this is gorgeous. This is just super, super cool. Oh man, it's so, like, you, like it, it's Riot showing off how accurate they can be when they need to make two, you know, like mirrored sides, mirrored scales, and they need to line up perfectly, right? If they're off just a little bit, you're gonna see it. And this is perfect. The little area back here for the lanyard, I'm not even mad about that. It just looks cool. That's, you can put your lanyard there, so great. The pocket clip, the position of it is funny. Like, you're gonna have this boot heel sticking up out of your pocket, but you know, um, all right, it's there. It's still a medium depth carry. The pocket clip absolutely does go with the theme of the knife and I appreciate that. But again, like I said, the, the thing that I don't like is that the tip of it is so pointy. It's just kind of crazy. There is fortunately a nice ramp and a smooth surface for this to glide gracefully in and out of your pocket. So that should be pretty good. The holes, uh, it's really random. It's like they were like, hmm. You know what? Let's drill a bunch of holes in. <laughs> like, what, what? Okay. Um. Like, uh, I don't know what the reason is. It's not enough to make meaningful weight reduction. Um. And it's not like it needs drainage or maybe you know it's so it's more aerodynamic if you have to throw it. <laughs> I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I can't say it looks bad though. Usually I don't like holes. For some reason, this is okay. You know, it's. Uh, for some people, some people are gonna go, I hate that. For me, I'm kind of like, oh, okay. It's not, the thing is, it's not really hurting anything. So, all right. I really would have appreciated a, some type of, um, what I think that they should have done with this to make it really like, you know, feel new is to do, you know, kind of the sub frame lock or bolster lock under additional inlays. That's what we should have had on this side. Because this side, the only thing keeping it from being maximum boring is the fact that we have those holes right there. But there should have been a mirrored inlay set up on this side and then maybe like a sub. Uh, kind of like a, like the Riot Crossroads. If you want to look that up and see what that looks like, how they did that with the double inlays, I think that that would have been really great with this. It's fine the way that it is. As time progresses, I prefer exposed frame locks less and less. Um, but I really think that that would have been an awesome way to do this. So there you go. Uh, steel lock bar insert the doubles as the over travel stop. So that's nice. We are locking up. I always miss this. We're locking up at, uh, I don't know, 15%, 20%. Completely solid though. The actual lock bar or the stop pin is located internally. And does it fall out? No, I think it's, no, it does. Yeah, it does follow the blade, which is nice. So you get... Basically, there are channels on the inside of these scales and those pegs that are attached to the blade, you can see them right there. They follow those channels and then stop on the frame. So you get an additional point of contact versus the blade resting right on a single stop pin and being one point of contact. You get two points of contact, which means the action can be tuned to be a little more smooth while still having that tight, solid lockup with no wiggle in any direction. Um, and I like to believe it it keeps pressure away from the pivot during cuts, or it helps mitigate pressure away from the pivot. Whether or not that's actually true, I don't know. I just, like, that's the way that I see it in my head, right? Additional points of contact mean less pressure on the pivot if you are doing a weird cut. Um, is that, uh, yeah, I think it's about it. Oh, centering, yeah, let's do that. Okay, it's perfectly centered. I mean, and, and like, it really, like you can see, it is laser perfect on that seam. Um, so that's nice. No detent lash, no pivot lash. It's absolutely solid lockup. I wouldn't expect anything less from Riyadh. So, final conclusion. I don't like the, um, I, I definitely don't like how pointy the pocket clip is. This would have been, this would have just been substantially more appealing had they done the same type of inlay and sub frame lock setup as the Riyadh Crossroads. Um, or is it the Mini Crossroads? Excuse me, that I'm thinking of. But this is okay. It is a Riot knife, which means fit and finish, overall functionality, and just general machine work are a step above what we generally see 
from you know the Chinese OEM competition in this premium territory. So you can expect these to be a little bit higher. And it's it, generally speaking, as somebody who has been buying Riot knives for like a decade, it is justified, right? So what I'm saying is, is like a lot of Wii knives and Best Deck knives and QSP and so their premium stuff ends up at about 250 bucks. And Riots tend to be on their lower end at about 350 bucks. And I, most of the time I'm like, yeah, I'd rather spend an extra hundred and get that extra Riot quality. Anybody who's handled a Riot, right, or multiple, they're gonna say generally the same thing. You do see a step up in overall quality. Um, that being said, what do these come in at? This particular variant that I'm reviewing right here will be $360. Eh, it's okay. Uh, the full titanium version that has no, I have seen it. I've seen it on Riot's Instagram page. So I know it exists. If they release it, it will be less. It will probably be 320 to 340, um, which is where I feel like this should be. For 360, again, I really wish they had done the inlays on both sides. It's still pretty good though. Um, and the nice thing is I didn't expect to really feel like this was a knife that you could take out and use and not just admire, even though it is plenty durable and actually made to be used. Sometimes these designs are more, you know, pieces of admiration than they are serious day-to-day -day cutting tools. But yeah, you can definitely take this out and use it. Um, I don't love the price, but I don't love the price of anything right now. In fact, I hate the price of most things right now. Um, Riots tend to feel a little bit more, yeah, that's worth it, right? Because they do those, they take those extra steps. They have the really cool, insane, accurate milling on the titanium. They have the great inlay work. They have the full thrill, uh, 3D milled pocket clips, right? Uh, the correct heat treat, generally speaking, with blade compositions like M390. This is cool. I like this. I think um, it's not going to be something that every single person is going to absolutely love. There's enough of kind of a wild aesthetic here that the, the aesthetic itself is generally going to be, people are either going to love the aesthetic or hate the aesthetic. So if you love the aesthetic, you're going to love the entire knife. The whole thing just feels awesome. If you don't like the aesthetic, you can pretty much stop right there because there are a million knives out there that are going to perform as well or better. Um, and so you, you know, you're just, you're just paying $360 for nothing. So not something I think everybody needs to rush out and buy, but, but if you like this aesthetic, the price is okay. The build quality is awesome and it's a really unique looking knife. Definitely. Um, so that's really all I can say about it. If you like it, check it out. You're going to love it. I'll link it right down below. Uh, make sure you take a look around at Crane's Cutlery. They have a lot of cool stuff, and I feel like they don't get nearly as much attention in the knife world as they deserve. Uh, thanks again to Crane's Cutlery for loaning this to me for review. This will be going back to Crane's Cutlery. I do not get to keep it. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.